is Pastor Joyce Harnett, Senior Pastor of Ennis Army Ministries Apostolic Church, located in Jacksonville, Florida. First, I want to thank you for tuning in each week to our broadcast, and I pray that our broadcast has been a blessing to you. Please don't forget to pray about partnering with us to be a kingdom investor. Our church membership has grown over time and we need to purchase a larger building. So please pray about sowing or planting a seed of any amount. We are a nonprofit 501c3, so your gift is tax deductible. We have three secure ways that you can give through paypal.me slash in his army ministries, or you can give through our Giveify app at NS Army Ministries or text to give 904-664-3021. We thank you for your gift. We thank you for your love. Now I'm getting ready to take you into our Friday night fire service with Prophet Dwight Fallens. Tune in and be blessed. Hallelujah. Those that will view, I pray that you are blessed from tonight's scripture. Um, the second Chronicles chapter 22, we'll begin reading at verse 10 through 12, and then we'll jump down to 12 through 15. You hear me? And that's fine. Don't, don't get nervous about the reading, you know, because some folks don't pick up their Bibles until they come to church. Right. So, so go ahead on and read it while you can. Right, right. <laughs> and then I may throw one old, one New Testament scripture in, and that'll be our reading for tonight, because I want you to get the full effect. I'm here on an assignment to encourage my dear sister. I'm so proud of her. I am so proud of her. She was just like everything she said. She was extremely nervous. And I remember her doing some of her sermons at the church. And she would have so many notes. And she would be mad because she didn't get to all of her points. You hear me? And I had to tell her sometimes. I told all our ministers, every minister that has had a part of my training, I tell them two important things. Study full and pray hot. Yeah. You hear me? Study yourself till you have more than enough information and pray until every time you grab the mic, you hot and ready. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that'll make a good because you won't be able to get it all out. You, mm -hmm. you hear me? And then give them just enough to keep their attention. <laughs> all right. All right. As a pastor, Pastor Hartnett, you're going to even sometimes have to preach a series because you ain't going to be able to get it all out in one Sunday. So that's so important. Amen. Amen. I believe in adequate preparation. Amen. So let's read Second Chronicles chapter 22, verses uh, 10 through 12. Then we'll jump. Y'all just follow with me. It says this. And now, now, when Athaliah, the mother of Azariah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed the royal heirs of the house of Judah. Isn't that sad? You know, but Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Josiah, uh, the son of Amaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were, uh, who were being murdered and put him and his nurse in a bedroom. So Jehoshaphat, the daughter of the king, Jehoram, the wife of Jehadiah, the priest, uh, he was the sister of, she was the sister of Azariah. Here is the main focus. Hid him from Athaliah so that she did not kill him. Mm. Verse 12. And he was hidden with them in the house for six years while Athaliah reigned over the land. Go down to verse 12. Now, when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people in the temple of the Lord. And when she looked, there was the king standing by the pillar at the entrance of the elders and the trumpets were by the king and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. So also the singers and the musical instruments, she tore her clothes and said, treason, treason. Pay attention to this next verse. And, and Je Jehodiah, the priests brought out the captains in the hundreds who were set over the army and said to them, Take her aside under God and slay with the sword whoever follows her. <laughs> Y'all got to catch that. 
Don't just get her, but get who follows her. We go get this here. Slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priest said, do not kill her in the house of the Lord. Last verse. So they seized her and they went by the way of the entrance of the house gate and to the king's house and they killed her there. I want to throw one verse in. Type this verse in. Amen. Just one quick little verse. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. And it says this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We have a treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence power of God, uh, power may be of God and not in us. Our focus verse can be found in verse 12 of, of chapter 22 in Second Chronicles. And it says, and he was hidden. And he was hidden. And he was hidden uh, with them in the house of God for six years while Athaliah reigned over the land. Tonight's teaching is not for everybody. It's only for those that are sitting in here and those that are viewing this message, whether pre-recorded or live. I came to tell you that you are God's hidden agenda. <laughs> Look at somebody sitting and saying, God has a hidden agenda. I came, Mama, I came, Coco, I came, Evangelist Young, to talk to at least three to four people who's wondering what's going on, who's in a state of confusion. You can't quite put your hand on it, but you do know that trouble don't last all day. <laughs> You, you know, as the old folks say, this too shall pass. And for some reason, God has let you live. Oh, I, I, I don't say that, y'all. Go, go, I ain't come for everybody, Minister Tony. This message might not hit everybody, but it's came for come the on. people. I came for the folk to let you know, don't ponder, don't wonder anymore. Sit back and trust God. That's it. Because God has a plan. God help me in here. There are three P's I want you to write down. Plan, purpose, and presentation. That's it. Plan, purpose, purpose and, and presentation. presentation. This message, Pastor Hartnett, is specifically for you and those that you lead and those that are sitting in here because so many people don't understand really what's going on at this present state. God sent me here to let you know that you are a part of a divine plan. You, hear me? you might not know all the details. You might not be able to put your hand on it. But if God is letting you live through this pandemic, then your future is secure and God is working out the details. But what you mean, Elder Father? Jeremiah 29, 11 is in full effect. For we know, I know, the thoughts that I have toward you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. To give you a hope and a future. Sisters and brothers, we cannot let what we see and what we hear deter us from what God said. God, yeah. Coco, I had to learn with tears rolling down my eyes, with a heart filled with confusion, with a mind mixed up and, and, and having to make my own peace. The best worship that you can give God is one where you lift up your hands and say, God, I still trust you. God, I don't like it, but I trust you. God, I don't understand it, but I trust you. God, I don't even see how you're going to get me out of it, but I trust you. Got to finish, got to finish, got to get through this. Going to cut through the corner so we can get on. But here it is. This is a unique story. The Bible is filled.
you with great stories that will help you get through troubled times. Nothing will ever catch you by surprise. When you study the word of God, there is something in the word of God for every situation of your life. This is a unique story because we're dealing with somebody now who is evil, mean, and nasty. Somebody who is treacherous. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody that came from a nasty background. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody that came from an evil root and heritage. And her name is Athaliah. Y'all ain't saying nothing. People don't talk about Athaliah. People always talk about her mama. Everybody knows her mother. Everybody knows her father. But they forget to talk about Athaliah. Athaliah's daddy name was Ahab. And her mama was Jezebel. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know Jezebel. The evil queen. The one that has manipulation, control. The one that likes to have their way. And Jezebel, hallelujah, is a spirit. The spirit of Jezebel has no gender. Just so happened it was in a female in the Bible. But the Jezebel type spirit can even be in a man. It is a spirit of manipulation, a spirit of control, a spirit of treachery, and just downright evil. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The spirit of Jezebel has nothing to do with eyelashes, lipstick, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, and earrings and I mean tight dresses. Can I tell you, those are attributes. Because if it was in a man, it would be flashy. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It would be prideful. It would be cantankerous. He would look like Don Juan. Because Jezebel prided herself on how she looked. Uh, a, a Jezebel spirit has a that's called narcissist. Uh, very narcissistic. Everything got to be about you. Everything, if, if I can't get my way, then it's the highway. And then they turn things around to make it seem like you're the one that did it wrong. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> That's the spirit of Jezebel, and it has no gender. It can be in a man or a female, a, a, a male or a female, and it's the truth. But we got to understand that the spirit of Jezebel produced a child. You know what I'm saying? Now, let, me, let, let me back up a little bit, Mama, because I want them to get this. Uh, the spirit of Jezebel actually is not as strong as people want it to be. Uh, our people make it to be. Y'all, I didn't mean to go through all of this. Mess. Because Jezebel was the planner. Y'all got, got to read this one. Jezebel was the planner and the schemer. But Jezebel needed her husband, Ahab, to sign his name to what she was doing. When you have a Jezebel spirit, you need somebody of authority that's weak. And you hear me? And that can be manipulated. You me? Because everything Jezebel did, she had to have her husband's signature. So when you see the spirit of Jezebel, it will always be connected with somebody of influence. Can I, can, I, can I help you? Uh, we, have, we have former leadership. I don't want to call their names. But the former leadership really was just a figurehead. He had a cabinet of people that had an evil agenda. People got to truly understand that when you bind, rebuke, and reverse the spirit of Jezebel, also attack, bind, rebuke, and reverse the spirit of Ahab. Render them powerless. Render them, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because if those two spirits get together, then they will produce a stronger spirit named Athaliah. <laughs> because 
because Athaliah was a combination of Ahab and Jezebel. And when Athaliah comes in, she don't need a signature. When Athaliah is produced, all she needs is an opportunity. <laughs> is an opportunity to manipulate, control, and take over. Read the Holy Bible for yourself. When the king, when she saw that her son was killed, then Athaliah said, I can get it now. She took the throne. But this is the difference between a Jezebel and Athaliah. Jezebel was a plotress. She plotted on something. She schemed on stuff, And then tried to make it look like she didn't have nothing to do with it. That's why, listen, y'all better read the Bible. That's why when Jezebel died, Evangelist Sonia, her hands were so dirty, the Bible says the dogs ate everything but her hands. Y'all better read the Bible. I love the word. I love it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Here it is, y'all. When Athaliah takes the throne, Athaliah looks for an opportunity. And then the spirit of Athaliah will murder and kill anything that's a threat to the position. Even if it's her own family. Y'all better read the Bible. The Bible, this is where the story picks up. Read it as a personal Bible study when you get home. Everybody in here, I'm encouraging you, get the Holy Bible. Get the Bible you can read that everybody got, but then go get you an application or a message Bible that reads it like a story. You hear me? Because I promise you won't put it down. You hear me? It's some good stuff in this Bible. It's better than days of our lives, young and the rest, and as the world turns. Here it is, Athaliah, we pick it up. Athaliah now sees that her, her son is dead, and she says, I can take the throne now. So she realizes that her son has sons. Yeah, she has grand boys, you hear me? So what Athaliah does, Evangelist Sonia, is go to the nursery <laughs> and heal all of her grandsons, but she don't know God had a hidden agenda. <laughs> Somebody that was waiting, hallelujah. God had somebody to counteract the devil's plan. That's why I'm not worried about COVID. For every reason, Coco, I don't know why God is allowing it, but I do know in a few days, God's going to reveal his plan. I don't know why it took out some people that I love. I don't know why it did some folk that we love. I don't know why some people had to suffer in their bodies, but I do know after with some knowledge. She goes in there and to murder her grandsons. But the Bible says, my God, she had a sister-in-law that was married to a priest. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Realize what was going on. And sometimes you got to be like Jezebel. You got to say, I can't save everybody, but I'm going to go for one. <laughs> Sonia, this is for you. You got to make up in your mind, I might not be able to save everybody, but I'm going to try to save at least one. I'm going to try to go after at least one, because you never know, that one might be the one that will change the whole world. That one will be the one that will change the whole world. Look at somebody and say, go for one. Go for one. If you can't get them all, go for one. If you can't get them, at least try to get one. Hallelujah. Give it ears. She goes in there. She goes in the nursery. 
And she grabs up Josiah. She grabs him up. But this is the thing that blessed me, Evangelist Hunter. She just don't get him by himself right, because he's a baby. And mama, she grabbed him and she looked at his nurse and said, you come with me. Y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. When God saves you, when God is securing you, he will also secure what you need to get you through. Look at somebody and say, God is going to supply your needs. God is going to take care of you. Look at him and say, God has a nurse for you. God has a nurse for you. The Bible said, come on. The Bible said that she grabbed him up and she told his nurse, you come too. God ain't just going to bring you out and leave you. God going to send somebody that knows how to take care of you. Somebody that knows how to cover you. You want to handle it. But you do know when the dust settles and the smoke clears, God always brings you out on top. That's how you know God has a plan for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I got to go, mama. Got to go. Ain't got nothing but a few more. And then when you realize God's plan, then God begins to unfold his purpose. They did not hide him anywhere. Y'all got to read the scripture for yourself. He was just not hidden anywhere. He could have been hidden in the house of a scribe. He could have been hidden in the house of a, of a peasant or a citizen. But they hid him in the house of the Lord. That's why Pastor Hartley, I don't know about these other folks. I got to step my foot in the house. I got to just get in the house. I don't care if they told me, Sonia, we got to wear gloves, a hat, a mask, a jacket, and everything. Else. I don't care what they say we got to get. I just got to get in the house. Because in the presence of the Lord, When you get in the house, y'all ain't saying nothing. Something happens when you step foot in the temple. Something happens when you just get in the place. They hear him in the house of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
and then hear him for a purpose. Y'all got to read it for yourself. In chapter 23, we didn't read all that, but the first verse said, in the seventh year. The first verse of chapter 23 says, Jehadiah the priest, uh, which happened to also be his uncle. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. He said, the time is right now. Hallelujah. Because a king could not properly take the throne. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Until he reached the age of seven. Now, some of you may say, at seven, how could he lead? Uh, at seven, it was known. It had to be made known that there is a descendant that can take the throne. Now, he did not lead on his own. He led with the counsel of his mother and the counsel of the priest. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. But at this whole time, God's purpose now is being Revealed. And when God's purpose is being revealed, Coco, it's just like a cake that's baking in the oven. Anybody in here? I know she said the sister brought a cake. Where you at? The lady who brought the cake. So you got to help the priest this. When you are a baker, you mix stuff together. Stuff that don't even make no sense. Don't you put flour? Y'all ain't saying nothing. I think they put a little baking soda, a little flavoring, a little salt or something like that. I ain't no baking. Don't even ask me to bake. I can't help you. But here, you put off, but if you taste that stuff by itself, it won't taste good. <laughs> but sister bakers, brother bakers in here, when you put it all together. <laughs> I remember my mama them baking stuff and and, the, and me and my brothers they don't hardly do this no more me and my brothers we will fight for the spoon thank you brother Tony we will fight for the battle because listen listen we will fight for the battle because we knew if the battle was good, the king was going to be good. Look at somebody and say, hey, we just eating batter now. But the cake is going in the oven. <laughs> Look at somebody else and say, hey, 